It all started with one question. How far can three random players be pushed in Arena? We all know that there are so many things that can hold you back from reaching your true potential, and we decided that needs to change. We asked you if you wanted to participate in a challenge to see if the average PvPer could be pushed all the way to Gladiator. After sorting through almost a thousand applications, we have found three players who we think are ready for our challenge. They will be paired up with coaches and will receive weekly lessons to improve their gameplay. The coaches will not be playing with our team, but instead they will be sharing their knowledge and expertise by reviewing gameplay and fixing key mistakes that our team might be making. This won't be a free ride, because it is up to each player to put in the work and dedication needed to push all the way to Gladiator. Over the next few weeks, we will be sharing the progress of our team and give you the same lessons that they are learning on their journey. Are you ready? Welcome to the Skill Cap Road to Gladiator Challenge. Before we meet our team, let's get introduced to our coaches. Hey, my name is Mauro. I've been playing WoW Arena competitively since 2017, pretty much. The last two years I've been doing really well, and uh, among other tournaments, we managed to win the AWC finals in 2020 and uh, season one finals in 2021. Joining Mauro will be Chanimal and Chaz, two former BlizzCon champions who bring years of experience to our coaching team. Mystic and Big Moran will also be taking some mentoring duties, making sure that each player has the right foundation to build their skills. Remember, our coaches won't be playing with our competitors. Instead, they will have to use their game knowledge to fix the key mistakes that prevent the average team from getting Gladiator. Some difficulties will probably be just kind of making them understand the win condition of their comp. I think that's a big issue on lower rated gameplay where people are lower rated because different comms and obviously also if you're facing different comms you're going to have different win conditions and the most important thing is to kind of understand them and always have the best strat. Obviously I want them to improve and I want the people to actually feel like they're going to be doing better in the end compared to what they've been like how they're doing in the start and yeah generally I just want them to kind of have a grasp on how the comp works at the end of the challenge. Um, I want them to kind of maybe understand the game a little bit better and maybe teach them a little bit, a little bit more about WoW Arena. Obviously WoW Arena is kind of similar to our expansion, so if you're going to be good once and you can understand the script and you can understand how you become good in WoW, you can kind of copy that in the future and you can kind of do it too well in the future again. So it'll be really cool if they can actually understand WoW Arena a little bit more. With our coaches selected, it's time to introduce the players. We sorted through nearly a thousand applications across both EU and NA and finally settled on our team. We selected three players who are currently around 2k rating in 3v3. Our rogue is named Arrow, and after a few seasons of hitting rival and duelist, he thinks he is finally ready to get Gladiator for the first time. Despite playing over 10 years and never getting past 2100 in 3v3, Arrow is ready for this new challenge. Joining him will be Imark, who is the least experienced player on the team, who started playing WoW with Shadowlands. He has found success in 2v2 this season, but without reliable partners, he hasn't been able to push past 1900 in 3v3. Finally, we have Rocky, who has queued his way to 2k with a friend in 2v2, but has been left shattered by the toxicity of LFG. He got his highest rating in Warlords of Draenor at 2200, but after rerolling Priest, he has yet to see elite ratings. They will be playing RMP, which of course is one of the best lineups in the game, but still requires consistent execution to do well. And with an average starting rating around 2k, our team will have a lot to learn. Uh, RMP is obviously a really strong comp right now, uh, but you really need to make sure that you land your setups correctly, that you don't leave gaps uh, in setups, that you don't fail, especially offensively. Defensively, I think it's kind of straightforward and it's a little bit just trading CDs um, back and forth. But especially offensively, it's really important for MP to, to clean goals, to not fail the goals, because that's kind of how you avoid dying as well, because the more pressure you have, the more CDs you force, the harder it's going to be for the enemy team to play offensive. So, so yeah, you really need to make sure when you play these setup comms like MP that you don't fail your setups and that you land setups consistently as well. And so with our team selected and our coaches ready, it's time for our three players to show us their gameplay.
After our team's first Q session, our coaches sat down to discuss some key issues, which included building a lesson plan designed around the five pillars of WoW PvP. Offense, including damage and control, defense, with cooldown trading and kiting, positioning, communication, and finally, matchup strategies. Each one of these pillars would need to be developed for our team to reach their true potential. And as our coaches quickly discovered, one thing that was immediately obvious is that our team wasn't doing their setups properly. This is something that every comp in the game needs to do well. It doesn't matter if you're playing RMP, or a spell cleave, or even a melee cleave. Getting consistent CC setups is everything in Shadowlands. From looking at all the games so far, I think that these guys need to be trained on like step by step, what's the most important thing to train them on? I think it's literally like how to do good goes. How need, to use yeah, those they need CC. to reset and learn the, the basics. Of the yeah, goes. I think we're it's not like at the point. Three to I, one. Like, yeah, exactly. I think that's literally like lesson one. It's just it's just that. And then everything else can get added on later I on. Say, yeah, I think so too. I think it's just three to one and maybe they just need to understand strats a bit as well. Because it feels like this game, they don't even consider going priest. Yeah. They they go every single go and draw, but I mean, like I said earlier, that's not really how you want to play like a SMP anymore. You do want to swap after a go as well sometimes. That's yeah. why it's also bad that he's stunning people. It's so bad that he's stunning everyone. It's really bad. Just including like stunning the priest. He can stun the mage. Team. Yeah, he can stun the mage whenever he wants. I mean, the priest I mean, should just be creeped out of DB. I mean, or chastised fear or something. Our rogue was putting too many targets on stun DR, and our mage and priest weren't doing their CC together. The solution to this problem would be quite simple. Our team will just need to pick one target each and use all of their instant CC at the same time. This is crucial because if there is any gap in the setup, it will give the enemy team a chance to react, which could completely ruin the kill. Before correcting our team's gameplay, we needed to fix some fundamentals. <clears throat> so we sent them some guides from skillcap.com. This was the fastest way to make sure everyone on our team knew how to start playing like the pros. It is normally $4.99 a month, but we gave it to them risk free, just like our money back guarantee for signing up. Get access to over 600 exclusive courses and commentaries today at skillcap.com slash wow. <clears throat> And after making sure they had a firm understanding of their DPS rotation, it was almost time to play. But first, we had to meet with our coaches. One thing we noticed in our rogues gameplay is that he was trying to do too much by himself. Remember, our goal was to give our team a simple 3-2-1 setup that they can execute over and over. But our rogue was trying to do everything alone, stunning multiple targets on kill setups, preventing his team from playing their role in the CC chain. And to make matters worse, by putting everyone on stun DR, it was making it impossible to swap. All you have to get into your mind is that you're playing with two guys that have instant CC. All you need to do is stun one guy and send damage. And also, by remember what you said that when I asked you what should you do right now. Your suggestion was to stun the priest and then stun the rogue because you said because you said the priest is near you. Yeah. Well, well, there's a problem with that. What happens if you do that? And I, I can't do a go on the priest. Exactly, account. exactly. You can't swap anymore, which is the first thing that I told you you're doing wrong. You're stunning everyone, and you're you're closing off your your cross your swapping opportunities. The reason why I said it's fine to stun the mage from time to time is because you're not going mage, so the stun deals on him don't matter. This session taught our rogue that he needs to let his team help him. It wasn't necessary to do everything alone. With everyone on the team having instant CC, the goes just needed to be orchestrated. Guys, good job, good job, good job. On the website, they say, Yo, my Google is popping off, sorry about that. <laughs> this is something every melee player in the game should recognize. With each class having multiple defensive cooldowns and high mobility, you need to have really precise lockdown. If you leave any player free during your setups, you can allow one player to completely disrupt your kills. That's why melee cleaves at the highest level will even coordinate their crowd control on multiple targets, since leaving any gaps makes the kill window infinitely smaller. Oh, and by the way, if you're interested in seeing the full coaching VODs, they are available exclusively right now on skillcap.com slash wow. As far as our mage was concerned, he had to play an important role too. With tons of control, it's not always clear who needs to be CC'd with an abundance of options. He also needs to play a role on his team's CC, but this also required an update on the meta. Yeah, it just feels like you guys are using like all your CC like a little bit random. The the meta obviously the meta changed a bit in how you play RMP. That each one of you guys is gonna pick one target and CC that target. Like let's say an, into an RMP, you face an RMP. 
what you can do basically as an example is you can db sheep the holy priest if he has no holy wood and i see most people you face don't even play holy wood so that's i mean in a sense good for you guys you can chastise the mage and stun the rogue like as an example you know that's like a perfect yeah, setup yeah. three three v one perfect setup no stops but what you guys so are doing right at the same time yeah exactly you just and that's yeah. basically how people play on pds as well they just count down three two one blink db chastise stun and everyone is it's easy and it's like no counterplay basically unless you guys fade it where someone is slow or something in many matchups it becomes the caster's responsibility to cc the healer with countless stops and disruptions this can be a difficult task to do on your own which is why coordinating setups with your team is essential it makes your kills stronger while also making the game much easier for yourself Mages might have Dragon's Breath to help set up their CC, but other casters like Shadow Priests and Balanced Druids have their own instant cast CC combos that make it easier to snowball momentum with extended control on enemy healers. But even if your class doesn't have reliable instant cast CC, you should look to your partners for help with controlling enemy healers. And finally, for our priest, he needed to learn what should be communicated with his team and how his control and damage would fit into his team's setups. Just watching the games that everyone is not on the same page, so you need to be like, um, you need to cover the, uh, usually the off target where you chastise, and you need to communicate as a team to make sure that everyone's ready. Because sometimes one guy is sheep shotting, one guy is DBing, and the other two is not ready, etc. So you need to like communicate, make sure that you're all three is ready and know what to do. What our priest would learn is that his control matters too, and he would have to help his partners by taking one target out of the game during kill setups with Chastise Fear. With every healer having one or more CC spells, they become a vital part of their team's win condition and are usually responsible for locking down an off target during goes. In order to push rating, our priest would have to play a part of his team's CC setup, even if that means playing aggressive while under pressure. After the players met their coaches, it was time to see if they could put their lessons into action. Our team had two major offensive issues that needed to be fixed immediately. The first issue was their CC setups, which could be solved by coordinating spells with 3-2-1. 3, 2, 1, three, two, one go. The second issue was that we needed our team to keep up momentum in the opener, going hard on one target, but also leaving opportunities to instantly swap once cooldowns were used. Just swap instantly to healer here. Yeah. Okay. Let's go. Go, go. Uh... Okay, grounding, grounding is there. Good job. Oh my god, that's just so disgusting. <laughs> After taking their coaching lessons into Arena, our team winded up climbing MMR. By focusing on getting consistent setups with coordinated 3-2-1 crowd control, they were able to push rating instantly. Before his coaching, our rogue Arrow was trying to do too much by himself, stunning multiple targets, making it more awkward for his team to use their buttons, and even worse, sometimes leaving gaps in his own CC. This would give the enemy team small windows to react, while also putting every target on stun DR, making it impossible to swap effectively. But now, Arrow had simplified his gameplay by managing a single task on kill setups. Instead of spamming cheap shots on multiple targets, he was simply using kidney shot on the go. And even better, he wasn't leaving gaps in his stuns. And perhaps best of all, he learned to instantly swap to other targets off DR to keep momentum and even score kills. Go, go Priest now. I kick Cyclone now. I'm stunned. No. Go boom me now then. Okay. I bomb too. Alright guys. It's good to be gay. Yes, nice. Owned. Actually owned. This focus on simplicity could transfer to other comps and classes. Even if Arrow was playing WPS as a warrior, his role would be almost identical. Stunning kill targets with Stormbolt at the same time as Shadow Priest silences the healer. Our mage, Imark, was starting to be more consistent with Dragon's Breath after getting more confidence in his team's setups, something which was needed in the first Q session where he was pressing DB outside of kill attempts. But now, with coordinated setups, he knew exactly who and when to DB, even doing setups of his own to end games. Again, this would be an essential skill that could carry over to other comps and classes. By pressing CC on the healer, the moment a stun lands on the target, he could build enormous pressure. 
And finally, for Rocky, our priest, he was beginning to learn how his CC matters too. When he first started, fear and chastise were being used randomly, used on the kill target, or sometimes never even used at all. But now, he was starting to use chastise with his team to cross CC, even on targets right out of stealth. Our team realized that by doing consistent setups with clearly coordinated CC, they could beat any team. What, guys? Good job. I didn't record, are you serious? I did, I did, I did. Oh my god, yeah. And remember, it's not just RMP that needs 3-2-1. Every comp in the game, even melee cleaves, need to coordinate control to win. But in a comp with as much CC as RMP, proper setups give you the exact same kill windows as pro players. And after implementing the lessons from our coaches, our RMP hit a new benchmark, 2300 MMR and just a few games each from the entrance to Gladiator. With our team feeling confident, it was time to see if they could climb that final grind to 2400. At this point, they had started to master our first pillar of WoW PvP. With Cross CC as their focus for week one, our team was moving towards their goal. But as we would learn, there would be more mistakes holding them back. Offense is just one part of the equation, and there was more to learn. Especially now since they would be playing better opponents who could crush them with damage, and suddenly their ratings started to fall. After reaching their peak of 2300, one thing became clear that their defense desperately needed work. But with offensive fundamentals out of the way, it was time to go a bit deeper and learn the remaining pillars that would show our team how to play like the pros. Whoa, now doesn't that sound dramatic? Hey, let us know what you think of this series in the comments below. Do you have any predictions for our team? What do you think will hold them back? And if you're interested in seeing the full length coaching sessions for our team, head over to skillcap.com slash wow, where you can get instant access to all of our coaching sessions, as well as over 600 PVP guides made by some of the best players in the world. For prices as low as $4.99 a month with a rating gain guarantee, now is the perfect time to join if you want to start playing like the pros. As always though, thanks for watching. See you soon.